Good morning, boys and girls. I pray that uh, we all slept well. We slept early so that we will not be dozing during this this important session that we are having this morning. But also that later on, as we go to church, that we will be fit for the service. That no one will be dozing because I know that a lot of boys and girls, because we are on holiday. You want to trouble your mummies and daddies by sleeping late. Yeah. So welcome to everyone that is able to see us on Facebook and YouTube. Um, my name is Vusiku. For those that are joining for the first time, I'd like to say welcome. Now this morning we are getting our text from Matthew and chapter 1. 18 to 25. Matthew chapter 1, verse 18 to 25. And I'm reading from the NIV version. It says, This is how the birth of Jesus, the Messiah, came about. His mother Mary was pledged to be married to Joseph. But before they came together, she was found to be pregnant through the Holy Spirit. Because Joseph, her husband, was faithful to the law and yet did not want to expose her to public disgrace, he had in mind to divorce her quietly. But after he had considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife, because what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had said through the prophet. The virgin will conceive and give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. When Joseph woke up, he did what the angel of the Lord had commanded him and took Mary home as his wife. But he did not consummate their marriage until she gave birth to a son and he gave him the name Jesus. Thank you so much for paying attention. This is a story that is recorded for us like we have mentioned earlier on in uh, Matthew chapter 1. Verse 18 to 25. Obviously, I have chosen this theme because the whole world is in a mood of celebrating Christmas, the festive season. We are all excited about this Christmas <clears throat> like we have always been. And it is important, boys and girls, that we understand what this Christmas is all about. The passage before us certainly talks about this person, this Jesus, that the world is supposed to be celebrating. Because Christmas, basically, is about celebrating the birth of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, notice with me that uh, his birth was actually announced to Joseph by an angel that his wife Mary would have a child. Remember in that statement, she shall bring forth a child. Obviously, boys and girls, you agree with me again that the birth of a child causes us and people around us to celebrate. It causes us to rejoice that life has been brought to this earth, that there is a new born baby indeed causes us to rejoice with our family members, our friends, our relatives, and all those people that are around about us. And from the time one is born, every birthday is celebrated each year that progresses or passes by. And in our circumstances, we have birthday parties. How many of us like birthday parties? Oh, I guess we all like birthday parties. And we must have them, indeed, 
if we are able to, to afford, if we can afford to have a birthday party, indeed we must have them, especially when we are young. When we are young, it's fun. Okay? So, the whole world, like we have mentioned earlier on, is in the mood of celebrating Christmas, celebrating this birth of the Lord in Jesus Christ. This child that is mentioned in Matthew chapter 1, verse 18 to 25. Now, the reason we have brought this subject before us is that the world actually does not celebrate or remember the birth of Jesus in a way that is right. It does not celebrate Christmas in a way that brings glory to God. Okay? Before us, we are able to see that the world actually does celebrate this Christmas without God being at the center. For instance, the world, for those that do not know the Lord Jesus Christ, will have who host these parties and Christ or God will actually not be at the center of that celebration. It is just this whole thing of feel good, have fun, and Christ is not in the picture. God is not in the picture. He is nowhere near that celebration. And remember, boys and girls, what the Bible tells us in 1 Corinthians 10, 31, whatever we do, whether we eat or drink, we must do it to the glory of God. Whatever we eat, whatever we do, whether we eat or drink, we must do it to the glory of God. And that is recorded for us in 1 Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 31. So we have seen that the world or people that do not know God actually do celebrate Christmas without Christ or God being at the center of the celebration. And we also see that the world celebrates the birth of Jesus without Jesus himself being the focus. It sounds like a reputation, but we need to realize and to emphasize, boys and girls, that when we talk about Christmas, the message about Christmas is that Christ himself must be the focus. What we mean by the focus? That he must be at the center of our celebration. That even as we buy gifts, we exchange with our friends, our relatives, our mummies, our daddies, our uncles, aunties, or guardians, that we must always remember that we must do that with Jesus as the focus, reminding ourselves that this celebration is not for us to feel good, to have fun, but that we must focus on Christ. And we will see the reason why we must focus on Christ. Okay? We have already seen that the world actually celebrates without God or Christ being at the center. They just do things to feel good, perhaps some of them to show off. We have already seen that the world or those people that do not know God actually celebrate Christmas without Christ being the focus. Okay? We see here, furthermore, that they buy and exchange gifts for their own good. How many of us want Christmas gifts? Oh, I do, I do want as well. All of us want to have gifts. And so, the world will spend money, they will buy all these gifts, and they will lose the focus about, about Christ. Okay, they will buy these things, they will exchange for pleasure. Okay? Christmas to the world is a time to engage in ungodly acts like alcohol consumption and illicit relationships. Yes, boys and girls, come 
Christmas Eve or Christmas Day. Just walk around the streets, you will see how men and women, including young boys and young girls, they will be staggering on the streets because for them celebration of Christmas, like we have said earlier, is not focusing on Christ but on themselves and the pleasure that they will get from the celebration. They will go and drink their heads off, okay? They will engage even in illicit uh, relationships, okay? Relationships that do not glorify God. For them, it is a time to make merry by way of going to discourse and losing sight of Jesus, the owner of the birthday, the owner of the birthdays. May we not be like the world, how they want to celebrate this Christmas, but let's have Christ as the, as the focus, okay? Others, if it's a business, it is a time to make big sales, okay? They want to sell perhaps flowers, perhaps plenty, quantities of chocolates, sweets, balloons, oh, so that they may have a lot of money and enjoy life without Christ being the focus. The sad reality is that the birthday commemoration of the Lord Jesus Christ actually brings about so many deaths because of drunkenness. People have engaged in activities that do not glorify the Lord Jesus Christ. How then must we celebrate Christmas or the birth of the Lord Jesus Christ? Let me read with you again. Matthew chapter 1, verse 21. She will give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. So, it is actually the opposite of what we said earlier. How must we celebrate this Christmas? We must celebrate Christmas knowing that Christ must be the focus. We must realize the reason why Christ came here on earth. The Bible tells us in Matthew chapter 1, verse 21, that he will save his people from their sins. Therefore, as we celebrate this Christmas, we must ask ourselves, are we part of God's people? Are we part of the people whom Christ died for? Yes, Christmas talks about the birth of the Lord Jesus Christ, how that he was born into this world, born of the Virgin Mary. And yet we know, in fact, at some point, at, at, at some time also, around April, we also commemorate the death of the Lord Jesus Christ. So as we celebrate this Christmas, let us ask ourselves, are we part of the people whom Christ died? Are we part of the people of God's community? the people whom we are told that they would be saved because the Bible says she will give birth to a son and you have to give him the name Jesus because he will save his people from their sins. Therefore, as we celebrate this Christmas, let us also examine ourselves to see if we are part of the people who have been forgiven of their sins? Who have been forgiven of their sins? We need now to reflect seriously, to examine ourselves if we are saved. That is the essence of this Christmas message. The coming of the Lord Jesus Christ was to save men and women, boys and girls, from their sins. So, we must not only celebrate by way of exchanging gifts. No, if we do that, we will have missed the mark, we would have missed the point. But in celebrating this Christmas, let us know 
that Christ came so that we would be saved from our sins. Have we been forgiven of our sins? Are we part of God's redeemed people? Are we part of the forgiven people, the saved people, people who are called God's children? Remember uh, in the month of November, the, 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 the series that we had during that heightened period of evangelism, the children of God. So boys and girls, if you have been convicted of, by this message and you know that you are not a Christian, the Bible is very clear that today, if you hear his voice, do not harden your heart. Today, if you hear his voice, do not harden your heart. You can actually ask your parents, your uncles, your aunties, the people you are with at home, so that they can explain further these things that we have discussed, these things that we have heard. But if you have an opportunity to come to church this morning, later on, you can actually see any of the uncles, the aunties, they can explain to, to you these things further. The point is that you must be a Christian, even at your tender age, you must be young. You, 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 you must be saved whilst you are young. And it will be a very nice thing to know that actually I got saved because I listened, I heard the Christmas message that Christ was actually born so that my sins could be forgiven. And I gave my life to the Lord Jesus Christ because of that message. I did not celebrate Christmas like the, the world celebrates by only buying gifts, exchanging gifts for my own pleasure without Christ being the focus. But that I focused on Christ. I examined myself to see if I'm part of God's redeemed people. Therefore, boys and girls, as we end, again I would encourage you that today, like the Bible says, if you hear his voice, do not harden your heart. The Bible tells us that we must call upon the name of the Lord, and we shall be saved. Amen.